On this day, the 22nd of December, 1894, Alfred Dreyfus is convicted of treason. This is going to go on and snowball to create a number of crises which were to rock the Third French Republic. And it would not officially be sorted out until 1906. Twelve years of ongoing rumbling crisis. <clears throat> Throughout this time there were up to 20 anti-Semitic riots throughout France. Zionism became a thing because of this episode in French history. Theodore Herzl became convinced that the Jews could not ever live amongst the nations, that they needed their own land and their own country. And he became convinced of this because of what he saw happen during the Dreyfus Affair in France. France had been defeated by Germany in 1870. Napoleon III had been ousted and fled and the Third Republic, Third French Republic, had been established as a temporary thing. It was never meant to continue very long. One of the Bourbons was offered the throne not long after because in the election that followed the fall of Napoleon the monarchists were in the majority. They got a landslide in that election. He refused because he didn't want to accept the French tricolour as the flag of France. He wanted to go back to the original royal flag of France, which they, and they said no, and so he turned down the throne. Seems a, a petty thing to do. Why not just accept it and then maybe campaign when you're the king to change the flag or amend it? But then again, some of these people don't seem terribly uh, sensible. But then again, maybe he didn't want to be king, seeing the last 80, 90 years in France and all the chaos and revolutions that had happened. However, because of his, his refusal, they were left with this republic which no one really wanted. A republic in which everyone in control was a monarchist, in which the majority of the MPs in Parliament were monarchists kind of a strange sort of thing. So they had to stumble along. No one liked the Republic, but there were some convinced Republicans who, who wanted to make it better. They wanted to transform this new Republic into what they thought it should always have been. Over time, the Republicans began to accrue more power in Parliament, and they even started to win elections. Socialists were even elected to Parliament. It was in this time, in a country where they, no one really loved their government, the Republicans didn't really like it, they wanted it to change, the Socialists wanted to overthrow it, the Monarchists wanted to abolish it, the Napoleonic Bourbonites, uh, the, well, the no, Bourbonites and the Bonapartists wanted to replace the president with an emperor or a king. So no one could really agree on anything and no one cared for the structure of government that was there. One of the institutions of state which people did have respect for was the army. The army, however, as is always the case, tended to be staffed by conservatives, monarchists, and Catholics, people who had at best contempt for the Republican government. 
The Republicans, when they were able to, started to modernize the army. So instead of um, getting into the army, the upper ranks, because of who you are, they tried to meritocratize it, so to, to democratize it and to allow people from the very bottom to get to the very top. Alfred Dreyfus was one of these men. He was a Jew. He was from Alsace, which was now a part of Germany because it had been ceded in 1870. Probably one of the biggest mistakes Bismarck made was to take Alsace-Lorraine from France. If he hadn't done that, maybe the French wouldn't have had that burning hatred towards Germany. But anyway, so Alsatians were seen as suspect. Alsatian Jews were even worse. And an Alsatian Jew who is above his station is the worst of all. So these more aristocratic types in the army had many reasons to despise someone like Alfred Dreyfus. He is actually the first Jewish officer to be passed, passed out at that time. And he had a big cross on his head. So, in, at the beginning, a cleaning lady in the German embassy found pieces of a note that had been ripped up in the bin of the German military attaché. So he had got this note from someone, had read it, torn it up and thrown it away. She was in the habit of going through the bins and looking for notes. And she found this and she brought it to French military intelligence. They looked at it, investigated it, and they believed that the writing looked much like Alfred Dreyfus's writing. And pretty much on that alone, and considering that he's an up-jumped Alsatian Jew, he was an outsider they didn't like automatically. He was convicted of treason on very flimsy evidence. Most of it was circumstantial. It was about how people felt about him. Apparently he was a bit cold, distant, haughty. But then again, you know, he's from France. So. And that didn't um, do him any favors either. So between his personality, who he was, where he was from, and the fact that he had been a nobody that had worked his way up, and they thought, eh, kind of looks like his writing, he ended up convicting him. He was sent to Devil's Island in French Guiana, where he spent five years. Devil's Island being famous as being one of the most brutal prisons in the world. Well, at that time, definitely. One of the most famous prisons in the world. Now, a year later, <coughs> or two years later, um, evidence comes up implicating someone else. A certain Ferdinand Esterhazy. Now, this became known to certain people, including Dreyfus's brother, Matthew. He brought it to the attention of the head of the, the president of the Senate. And the president of the Senate got back to them within three months and said, yeah, that, I, I, I think it's this guy and it's not Dreyfus. He was convinced by the argument that Matthew and the family put forward. Now, then, Ferdinand Esterhazy, who was in the army, he was a high up in the army, and he had actually been the one that was um, offering the Germans information. For some reason, I think one of his lovers said that he had said he had contempt for France, he hated France and hated the army, 
Mm, don't know, maybe it's just what she said. But once <clears throat> he had been tried in 1898, he was found not guilty after two days. So it sounds like they were covering up. They knew it was him. They knew they'd made a mistake. And they were embarrassed. So they just, in a secret trial, secret military trial, they just brushed under the carpet. He then immediately flees abroad after shaving his moustache. He goes to Brussels and then goes to England. Because he knows he's guilty. So, after this, there was a series of anti-Semitic riots after he was acquitted. Which is odd because he wasn't Jewish and I suppose they were just, I don't know, just up for any, up for any sort of anti-Semitic riot. But throughout this, the people who ended up supporting Dreyfus were generally the Republicans and the, the secularists the people who wanted separation of church and state. The people who were against Dreyfus generally were the uh, uh, Catholic military monarchist types, conservative types who wanted to prevent the Republicans getting a hold of France and introducing their laicite law, which they did in 1906. So this seems to have been a big part of a culture war in France in the late 19th century where this became a totem, a symbol for each side. So whatever your opinion about Dreyfus, that would tell you on which side they stood on pretty much every other subject. So a French writer famous French writer, Emile Zola. He wrote a letter called J'accuse, where he wrote to, well, it was a public uh, letter in the paper, but he addressed the French president and various other powerful people in France. And he basically accused them of a miscarriage of justice, of being cowards, of liars, and... He also accused Ferdinand Esterhazy of being the one that did it. Now, what they did with him was they sued him for defamation, and they won. So, then Emile Zola had to flee France as well. So he fled to England. So, him and Esterhazy and Dreyfus are still in prison. But then, eventually, what they decided to do, because it was getting ridiculous at this point, they brought... Uh, Dreyfus back in 1899 for trial, a new trial, where he was found guilty again. So he's found guilty twice. But at this point, the president decided to pardon him because it, this, this affair was getting too much at this point. It was becoming a political thing. It was implicating people in the military, in intelligence. It was even implicating another country, Germany. This was becoming a very big deal, and it was becoming awkward. So they pardoned him, but he was still guilty. And he petitioned for many years until 1906, where they finally um, abrogated the guilty verdicts, and they reinstated him into the military, giving him the Légion d'honneur, the cross of honour, um, saying that he had been martyred as a soldier. So, interesting times in France. Interesting consequences. You could say, possibly, Israel exists because of this episode. So, on the 22nd of December, 1894, Alfred Dreyfus is convicted of treason. If you like these videos, come back tomorrow for more. Comment, subscribe and like.